Hi, I'm Chris the Counselor, and this video is part one of the key concepts in person-centered counseling. So this video is part one in a series of four, which is going to outline the main concepts in person-centered counseling. If you're looking for an introduction to the person-centered approach to counselling, then I would recommend checking out my other video, which gives a brief overview of the theory and also explains how it works in practice in a therapeutic relationship. However, in this series of videos, I'm going to outline about 15 different concepts and terms, give a brief introduction and overview of each of them, and also explain how it fits into the wider concept of the person-centered approach to counseling. So the first concept I'm going to look at is the actualizing tendency. Now, the actualizing tendency is a tendency that Rogers believed was in all living things. It was a motivational force which moved us towards growth and enhancing our experience. It is also the reason that the person-centered approach is a non-directive approach to counseling. If we believe in the actualizing tendency, then there is no need to guide or direct our clients, but instead we can put our trust in the clients and their actualizing tendency, and most importantly, the direction that our clients choose to move in. As you can see, this is central to the person-centered approach and our beliefs as therapists. The theory is quite complex and I've made another video which goes into a lot more depth and detail about the actualizing tendency. But for the purposes of this video, this is just a brief introduction to what the actualizing tendency is and why it's so important in the person-centered approach. The next concept that I want to look at are the six necessary and sufficient conditions. These were six conditions which Rogers outlined and said that they were both necessary, meaning that they were needed in the therapeutic relationship, and also sufficient, meaning that nothing else was needed to make the therapy effective. Now again, this is a bit more complex and goes into a lot more detail, and for that reason I've made another video which explores the six necessary and sufficient conditions in a lot more detail. But it's enough to know for this video that the six necessary and sufficient conditions were the six conditions that Rogers thought were all that were needed to make therapy effective and create personality change in the client. Now something that came out of the necessary and sufficient conditions are the three core conditions. Now, Rogers didn't use this term himself, but actually came from writers later on. However, the core conditions were embedded in the six necessary and sufficient conditions. These three core conditions were the only conditions that the therapist needed to offer their client to make therapy effective. The three core conditions were empathy, which is about understanding the client from their point of view, unconditional positive regard, which is about offering acceptance and a non-judgmental attitude towards the client, and congruence, which is about the therapist being genuine and real in the therapeutic relationship, and meaning that whatever was communicated by the therapist was genuine. These are the three core conditions, and these are essential in what we offer our clients as therapists. These are central to the person-centered approach and how we operate as therapists in the therapeutic relationship. Now the fourth and final term that I want to look at in this video is frame of reference. Now a very simplistic way to understand frame of reference is that it's quite similar to point of view. What this means is that if we are in the client's frame of reference, then we are looking at things from the client's point of view. 
So if we're responding to something in the client's frame of reference, then it will be from their world, their view of the world, and their beliefs and values. However, if we're responding from something in our frame of reference, then this might not necessarily be in the client's point of view. This would be our own view, maybe challenging the client, our own opinion or observation on the client, but it is completely from our point of view and may actually not come from the client. So frame of reference refers to the place that we are responding from. Are we responding from the client's frame of reference or from our own frame of reference? This is the best way to understand it. So this has outlined four main concepts in the person-centered approach. As I say, I'm going to be looking at many more in the other videos in this series, but for the time being, this is the end of part one of the key concepts of person-centered counseling. Music